In this video, I'll be showing the use of Live ND on the OM1. This video is slightly different to the normal bird sort of macro photography videos that I normally do for my channel. Today I'm down in Cornwall and I'm at St Michael's Mount and I'm doing some landscape seascapes. Uh, what I'm using is using the OM1 but I'm also be going to be using the Live ND facility on it. So I can actually change the shutter speed in camera um, or we're using the neutral density filters. It's 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, the sun's just coming up over there. It's actually catching the castle and the, the, the mount on St Michael's Mount quite nicely. What I'm actually photographing or concentrating on is using a wide angle lens and I'm trying to get the movement of the water on the rocks down below me. I've got an ND filter in camera so I can use that and dial in whatever different exposures I want. I'm also using a, a, an ND soft grad uh, on the sky. The sky's a little bit bright, but I like some clouds behind the sky really. Um, but you, you have what you have. Uh, and I've also got a polarizing filter on the, on the front of the lens. And what I'm going to be doing is a range of exposures. I'm going to be doing Summit F ND64, ND632, ND16, ND8 and ND4. And that will give me a variable shutter speed between 8 seconds, 4 seconds, 2 seconds, 1 second and half a second. And then in post-production when I get the pictures back I can decide which shutter speed I think works best. You never really know, generally speaking about 2, 4 seconds works best but sometimes you can, it can surprise you, the 8 second one longer exposure can look very very nice indeed. So I've got the camera on a tripod, I'm shooting at f8. So at f8 that's going to give me enough depth of field to get everything sharp from front to back and I've manually focused. So hopefully I should get some nice shots this morning. So looking in the menu we're going to be looking at shooting live ND. You go to the menu number two, scroll down to live ND which is currently off. You press the OK button, press OK again, you go to on, press OK again. That will give you when you scroll down your live ND numbers and this will give you a range from ND2 right down to ND64. I usually go through the whole lot. I'll do ND64 which will be about 15 seconds. ND32 is probably about 8 seconds. ND16 is 4 seconds. Then you go 2 seconds, 1 seconds down to half a second can turn live simulation on. I've got it set on at the moment, I can put that off or on. It gives you an idea roughly depending on what shutter speed you've got. So for the next shots I've changed the composition slightly. I'm still using the same camera, same lens. I've lowered the tripod slightly. There's a concrete walkway here that makes a good leading line to the island. So again what I will do will be uh, a series of different exposures, um, 8 seconds, maybe even go longer than that, uh, 4 seconds, 2 seconds, 1 second, half a second to decide which one I like. The tide's going out now, it's just going past high tide and it will actually expose this quite nicely. When it's a bit further out, there's quite a nice diamond triangular shape that you get sort of on this walkway. And it makes a very, very nice focal point um, with a wide angle lens. So I'll take a few pictures like that. So it's the last day of my Cornwall holiday. I've come back this evening to try and get a sunset on St Michael's Mount. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be lucky. There's a big bank of cloud over there. 
Um, sunset is probably in about an hour's time. It might be gone by then, we'll wait and see. But if we do, we'll get a nice lighting on there. The tide is actually coming in. High tide tonight is about 9.15 to now it's quarter past seven. You have to be very careful when you're photographing when the tide's coming in. It won't be that long before I'm having to start being pushed back. I've already got some, some quite nice shots already um, that I'm quite happy with. I've uh, been using the ND, live ND sort of facility on the camera again. Um, shooting about half a second to a second exposure. And I've got some quite reasonable shots, but the light's very, very flat. Although I do have some quite nice clouds behind St. Michael's Mount. So I'll carry on here, uh, find a different composition. And then I'm going to go over to the actual slipway. I'm hoping to catch it where the actual triangle part of the slipway is, is covered in water tonight. Hopefully I should get it tonight, although whether I'll get any decent light is dependable. So I'll take a few more shots here uh, and then I'm going to move around. So now I'm going to show some stills taken at St Michael's Mount and other locations during the week in Cornwall. This was one of the shots I took from the rocky outcrop before I moved over to photograph at the slipway. The best time to photograph here is when the tide is just starting to come up over the top of the slipway, which is about an hour either side of high tide. To get the triangle shape on the slipway in the composition you need a wide angle lens, and here the 8-25mm lens fitted the bill perfectly. This shot was one that I converted to monochrome in post-production. Now I think the treatment works well for this shot. The next two images were taken at Port Levin Beach. I used this group of rocks as foreground interest to lead into the composition. For this first shot the sun was out, so ND64 was helpful in being able to get a slow enough shutter speed to get some blur on the waves as they receded. There was quite a difference in exposure between the sky and the foreground, so I used a six stop soft edge graduated filter to help to balance exposure. The next image is the same group of rocks in the, in the previous image, but in this shot I've moved around to photograph them from the other side. By the time I decided on the composition and framed it up, the clouds had started to roll in but I managed to get a few shots of it before it started to rain quite heavily. The next two shots are the causeway leading to St Michael's Mount. To get a shot with no one on the causeway, it's best to take the shots as the tide's going out, so timing is critical. The first shot was taken with the 8-25mm, with the tripod low down to give some depth to the composition. The second shot was taken in portrait format from a higher position. It always pays to take pictures in both landscape and portrait format as well as at different heights and then you can decide later on which you like best. Of the two images I prefer the portrait version because I think the movement of the waves coming over the causeway is more pleasing. We went to Senan Cove one evening to try for sunset but unfortunately the colours did not materialise. This shot was taken at 7.30 which was about an hour away from high tide. Even still, the waves were crashing on the rocks and starting to go over the top of the jetty. Of all the shots that I took that evening, this was probably the most successful. I like the way the waves are coming over the jetty and the tide is coming up the beach. One location that I really enjoyed was Dollar Cove at Gunwallow. The advantage of this location is that at high tide it is very photogenic. There are lots of different compositions here and on this evening I had the whole beach to myself. The first shot was taken up on the cliffs looking down into the cove. For this shot I was using the 12-40mm f2.8 and I used a 13 second exposure. I felt it gave a pleasing effect with the movement of the waves crashing in on the beach. For the second shot I'd moved down to the beach and was using the 8-25mm lens. I had the tripod low down and used the rocks as foreground interest. I was lucky by this time the colours of the sunset were really starting to look quite spectacular. 
It was then a case of waiting for the waves to come in and then fire on the cable release as the water drifted back out. Waiting for the waves to recede usually gives the best water patterns. The last picture was taken from the same position as the previous image. The only difference this time was that the previous shot was taken at the 8mm end of the zoom, whereas this image was taken at the 25mm end of the zoom. It often pays to play around with different framing, focal lengths and compositions. The last picture was taken on a late evening walk down on the beach at Marisian. There was some nice colour in the sky which set off St Michael's Mount nicely. So what are my thoughts on using Live ND? I really like it, but you could argue that you can get the same effect using either slot in or screw in ND filters, and this is a valid point. What I like about Live ND is the speed and ease of use to change quickly from one ND value to another. With Live ND, I can change the exposure value of the ND filter in a matter of seconds. It really is that quick. So ease of use is a big consideration, and I hope these images show that Live ND works really well. I hope you enjoy the video and found it helpful. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.